Yo, what's up guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be doing another Showmaker review, and most notably about this game is that Showmaker ends up losing it, and not only losing, but every single person on his team is just getting absolutely railed. And so, I want to go over this and just show some of the things of what Showmaker does when all of his teammates are losing, because we've all been there, happens all the time in solo queue. The other team just straight up has the better team and we're going to see what we can take out of and what Showmaker does in these losing games to not still give over stuff to the other team from being behind. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so starting off, Showmaker is going to be using uh, Unsealed Spellbook on Zoe. It's been pretty popular and competitive and high elo. It really helps out with the whole uh, lane shove and looking to help out your jungler, help out your side lanes. Uh, it's a lot less of a lane dominant Zoe, much more of a help your team. And you're going to see that here. Here, such a strategic move by Showmaker, just sitting in fountain, you know, maybe getting in some sips of water to stay hydrated in the downtime. It's what we can only assume. <laughs> here we go. One minute into the game. He's here. But I uh, definitely don't want to be doing that. You want to be watching your, the, your jungle, the entrances for your team, making sure they're not invading. But <laughs> funny to see. Nonetheless, and he's going to be getting the corrupting pot as expected. Always love watching the uh, Showmaker VODs, though. Uh, definitely, probably my favorite player would be Showmaker. He's so good, even in solo queue. Always just performing consistently. And notice he's just going to start the queue and how he's just throwing the max range queue. And just right from the get-go, trying to make sure his wave's pushing in faster. He's getting that lane priority. And he's against a Nico. I think uh, Nico is honestly a really strong pick. Very underrated champion. Really cool by what the Nico just did, using the W to throw it at the wave to get the wave to stall from not going in the tower as quickly. But I think Nico is super underrated. See Showmaker stepping up, getting the, the empowered autos from his passive in. Now, once it gets to about 2.30, he will start have to or start having to worry about jungle ganks. You'll see since he has the lane shoved in, he's going to get the raptors. Now, I'll just... Whoops, I meant to pause that. So, uh, one thing to notice is he, while, since he gets the lane shoved, he gets the ward here. If you have the lane shoved like this, it's much better to get the wards... Uh, in deep at the raptors this gives you much more information than just like a river ward because you see all right the raptors is gone that means uh you'll be expecting the lulia to be topside already and it just gives you a bit more information and if you have it shoved you know you have no reason really not to get that better wards but obviously if you're getting shoved in and you don't really have the safety to get a ward like that you can just place it in the river it's fine So uh, notice here as well, uh, they just took a trade. He's hovering down to this side because he knows his cane's on this side. And they, thanks to this Raptor ward, they assume the Lilia is on the top side of the map. So he is completely safe being right here. He has his cane to run to in case something goes wrong. So just a quick thing to note right there. Looks for a bubble, ends up hitting it. Goes, gets the Q. Nice little poke onto the Nico. They have pressure. They find the Lilia now. Actually, she is in her bot side jungle now. There's a bit of a scrap going on. We'll see if Showmaker decides to roam down or not. It looks like double kill is going to go over to the enemy ADC. Also, another thing to note, the Lilia on the other team is Canyon. 
Uh, Canyon, obviously, is the jungler for Damwon Kia. So, definitely some good players. This is also Showmaker's main, so pretty high Korean challenger here. You know, Showmaker gonna get ganked, gets really lucky, and gets the Shirelia's Reverie to zoom on out. Doesn't even have to blow his flash. And it looks like the Aatrox is caught out here. Oh, not A Aatrox, uh, Kane. The Aatrox was the one doing the catching out. And the Kane's going to stick around. They knew that they were still there in the jungle. Gets greedy to try and get the Gromp. Gets punished for it. Showmaker's also getting chunked out a bit. He's pretty decently low compared to the Nico. He knows how much respect he's giving to this Nico. He knows the Nico has so much poke, has the range, and he's just playing so far back. And he knows in their top side, if you notice there, he was playing down towards his Raptors. Because he knew that. The last time the jungler has been spotted was in their top side jungle. So as long as he stays to that bottom side, he won't really be at threat of being dove either. It looks like he might try and get the angle for the bubble off the TP. Nails it. Now I imagine he'll just get some poke off and then take his back. Now we'll see what he picks up here. Might get... Uh, some magic resist. Merc Treads is super good against the team. Yeah, there's the Merc Treads. I imagine he might be going Verdant Barrier to this game. Uh, I can't really remember from looking at his items, but I also think Verdant Barrier would be super good here because they have three champions that deal manly, mainly magic damage and also Ezreal deals a little bit of mixed damage as well. So any MR you get would be super helpful. But Merc Treads is definitely a different a thing you want to buy against the uh, Nico as her stun or her snare. I wonder if I can check here. It has a ridiculous timer on it. Um, yeah, her empowered snare goes up to three seconds at max rank. People really disrespect just how long. Uh, whoops. Okay, and we see the bot lane losing on a fight here. Showmaker is going to be taking a little bit of a poke. A little bit of a skirmish with the Nico. But as I was saying, like people really disrespect against Nico. Just how long she can root people down and hold them down for. Not to mention the stun with her ulti. And if you hit the empowered E, it guarantees that your ulti is going to stun them. So getting these Merc Treads is really important. And he hits a nice little E, gets the poke down. And he's actually going to ignite. Maybe look for the all-in. And just right there. Oh. Without Merc Treads, he would have died. So, just goes to show you the very good buy. That's something, especially in the Nikos, you should do. Syndra's another big one where getting Merc Treads is something you're going to want. Now, Leona's going to try and go in, and, but... Notice, you know, Showmaker's low. The Leona's waiting to go in. Realizes he'll probably die if he tries to do so. And isn't really... Like, he constantly, you know, weighing. You know, is this a bad idea? You know, just because his teammate wants to do it, he's not going to go in for it, Which is an easy thing to get kind of sucked up into. You'll notice he has a 20 CS lead, really hasn't really been doing too much. And uh, he's just kind of been chilling out, CSing. And just by getting correctly last hitting and not trying to force plays, really at any rank, you'll be able to actually get an even CS lead or if not more CS than your uh, opponent will. And really is just important you know just get your last hits you don't have to be actively trading notice how many times has showmaker traded this game 
He really hasn't hardly traded at all. Like maybe he would ulti forwards to look for a bubble, and if he hits the bubble, there he'll go. But he's not just playing like super aggro, even though Zoe is a champion who can win like that. And that's how he's able to play so consistently well in every single game. And that's really what matters, especially once you get to the higher ranks, is just being able to consistently do well in your lanes so you can make impacts in the mid-game fights. Games are generally decided in those team fights at the second to third dragon, fourth dragon round soul, around that 15 to 20 minutes. You don't just have to be smurfing in the early game. You don't have to be solo killing your laner over and over. If you're the better player, you'll be able to get these small CFs leads and then snowball them into or snowball them from the mid-game fights. Now he's going to hit a nice bubble here. Notice how he's using the vision. He gets that pink ward into the bush to force the Nico down because he's missing in the bottom side of the map. And so the Nico feels the need to try and find the Zoe, kind of like start heading down bot side as well, and he punishes her for it. The Nico was actually scared that she was going to die and popped her ulti as well for the shield that it gives. So now he just has huge pressure now mid. And you'll see him again. You see he's backing off into that vision. That's something you want to make sure that you're doing on these assassins, on the Zoes. Any champion that has a lot, some kill pressure and has pick potential, you want to make sure you're abusing where you know the enemy does not have a vision at. See, so running out of mana, he's going to try and back here. Looks like the Nico's going to be able to stop it. This game is just an absolute disaster for them. Down 6k gold almost at 10 minutes. Gank going to be coming in from the Lilia. Nice sidestep on the Lilia ball. It's another good bubble, some good poke. Leona looks like she's going to be trying to make a play mid here. And Nico flashes away from the R, so pretty good roam by the Leona to get the flash from the Nico. Looks like Showmaker might be trying to head up top here to see if he can help out. Nope, changes his mind. Besides, it's not worth his time. Just gonna shove in the wave, take another base. And it doesn't look like he's going to be deciding to go to the Verdant Barrier. Uh, he'll be... Picks up the Lost Chapter, the Blasting Wand, that will more than likely be going into Everfrost. But, you know, he's just right back at it, shoving out waves. And this is something you'll notice. Every all the good players at the top of the ladder, you know, they're not playing for lane dominance. They're playing to just try and get lane priority. And then that's where their kills come from. You know, they're not just taking random trades, just randomly being aggro and just trying to fight, taking these coin or these coin flip 1v1s. They're pushing out the lane and they're looking to get advantages from that. Right there, that he looked for a trade, but he got nothing from it, but I just want to sh show like how these high-level players take these trades. So, bam, he gets the minion advantage immediately. Now that he has the minion advantage, he has his wave shoving in. Now he looks because the Nico is going to be looking. She wants to contest the wave, not to get it in. And once you get the minion advantage, like if the Nico decides to even try and trade back in, it's just no matter what, there's no possible way to lose it because she would have to tank the minion damage. So looking here is just absolutely free. He loses nothing by looking for a trade here. But he throws out the bubble, misses it, whatever. Uh, ends up getting ganked, but not the end of the world, but just wanted to show that off. 
He clears up this vision. Knows now that uh, they don't have vision in the area. And Harold is going to be dropped here. Looks like they're going to be trying to make a play. Hits the bubble onto the Nico. It should be a kill going over. Nice. Good Leona R. Can they get Canyon now as well? You see the Aatrox coming. It looks like they're just going to try and get out alive now. Uses the flash from the spell shard that he picked up. You know, notice, you know, he's not going too deep. Realizes once the fight's over with and just decides to get out before he dies. Isn't being overly aggressive. And speaking of being overly aggressive, Aatrox bites a bit more off than he can chew and ends up dying. And, you know, that's something that these really good players can do. They can tell when a fight's not going well, when it's lost, and they back out before they lose too much. That's something that lower-ranked players just don't have that well of a grasp on is, you know, they will just keep forcing a fight until the enemy team dies or they die. And you have to realize when it's losing, just try and get out, try and minimize the losses. And that's how you can end up coming back in these games. You, you have more impact in these losing games than you may think. And that's just because you're giving over too much that you don't need to be giving, you know, just making fights take a bit too long. And I'm going to imagine he's going to try and take a back soon here to finish out the Everfrost. He's only missing a little bit of gold. I believe after this wave, he will have enough gold to finish off the Everfrost. So I imagine he's going to be wanting to do that. Now he's going to be roaming down. The Nico's already there. Maybe try and help the team. Ulti misses the bubble. Yeah, now he's just going to try and run. Realizes he could not be of use. Now he should have his opes, decides to stay. Alright, now he'll probably finish his back. Oh, never mind, he spots the Ezreal a bit too far out in the jungle. One of these days he'll get his back off. Gonna be looking at his paddle star misses, just flashes over the wall. Picks up the kill. Now he has the heal. Looks like they might get a pick. They do end up getting the shutdown onto the Ezreal. Uh the Kane picks that one up. And now they got some kills back. Nico ends up getting picked out as well. And now they have the advantage. Ends up getting another kill, another shutdown. But this Aatrox is just absolutely massive. Will they be able to take him down as well? No, I didn't. So red team does get a little bit back here. Showmaker is fishing for bubble, fishing for damage. But notice, I mean, they're still down 6k gold and Showmaker is just not giving them anything else from himself, at least. His teammates are dying quite a lot. 
but he's limiting the damage. You know, just looking for what he can do. He picks up his Everfrost, uh, gets the alternator. He'll be building that into the Cosmic Horizon Focus. Hits the blind bubble, doesn't go for it. It's risky, doesn't see. Maybe Lily is there or something. He ends up getting an ulti, gets caught. It's a bit risky of a play, doesn't have to go for it. Good look. Fortunately, the Leona wakes up the Nico from the sleep. So he's not able to hit his paddle star. And Tristana getting a little bit caught out here. Wow. Actually still ends up dying from all the burns from the Lilia. It looked like that Tristana had a decent amount of HP. And uh, this game, it, the game's probably over at this point, but hopefully you're able to see this and y you don't have to be forcing plays just because you're behind. And hopefully it just kind of gives you an idea because you know you'll be there. And it's something that doesn't really get shown too often and from people who do like these kind of VOD reviews of generally, you know, either like the entire team is just winning and... You know, the game is just kind of won, or the person's just absolutely popping off, getting kills everywhere. They're like 13 and 1 and things like that. You know, I just kind of wanted to show from the perspective of what happens when teams are losing. Because it can feel like really hopeless and uh, doomed. And it's just something that I don't really see often that I just kind of wanted to make a video on. You know, what, what what's the best mid laner in the world do when their teammates are losing? The answer, they just do what they can. They make their plays, you know, he's not forcing, overly forcing plays, trying to make something happen. You know, he's just making sure he's not giving them any more and just looking to try and see if they'll ever overextend a bit too much and make throws. Lands a nice bubble on to the Lilia. He's able to get the kill. Let's see if they can try and get the Nico as well. Ooh, picks up. The shard as the paddle star is in route. Makes a really nice play, but he ends up dying over, and the scion does finish off the Nico though before he dies. It looks like the red team will end up getting Baron from this. Go ahead and just fast forward along. Just gonna try and get as far. I'm just gonna play it on two times here, as you know, being down 12k gold. Actually, I'll, okay, I'll play it normal for this fight. You know, he's just fishing for what he can. Really, there's no way to get back into a game from this far other than the team just kind of throwing and chasing too far. He realizes that, realizes there's really nothing else he can do here, and he'll just try and run away. So they get the inhibitor. Showmaker's just trying to defend. They're getting uh, fountain camped a little bit here. But it does look like right here is going to be the end of the game. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to get some use out of that. Maybe take a few notes down for yourself. You know, just kind of to see what good players do when they're losing. You know, kind of note... Because, you know, not every time are your teammates going to be winning. And 
uh, you'll get those games, you know, this is just an unlucky game. Not much really that Showmaker can do here, but you know, just because your teammates are losing, that doesn't really change how you play. You know, I'm sure he, he's not the type of player, you know, that just gets tilted, you know, types and things like that. He just stays calm, stays focused on what he can do, and he's not going to give the enemy team more and compound his mistakes and fall even further behind. And if you focus on this, you'll start to notice that you'll come back more times in the games because the game is not... The game right now is in a bit of a snowball-y state, but there's oftentimes they're not as down as much as you think, and your the enemy teams do make mistakes. And when you get to those mid-game fights, as long as you're consistently getting your farm and getting into the mid-game, you'll be able to make these comebacks, and you'll start winning games where you didn't necessarily win the early game, but throughout playing during the mid-game team fights and taking advantage of the enemy's mistakes that you were able to come back into them but uh feel free subscribe i'm trying to get a few of these videos out uh every week uh i'm trying to do just more stuff you know than just base fod reviewing but we'll see what the future has i have a few ideas of stuff i want to do uh Follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash loljss. I stream every single day, or at least try to, starting at 8 p.m. Central Time. But yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed watching, and catch you next time.